<clears throat> good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we have neglected to declare Jesus as the one who reigns our lives. We have been quick to call on others to follow the ways of Christ, yet slow to do the same. We have been bold in demanding generosity, mercy, and forgiveness, yet quiet when it comes to offering inclusion, love, and compassion. Heal us, O God, restore in us yet again by thy spirit. Amen. Amen. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. By the grace of Jesus Christ, God is doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Believe the good news. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Sunday begins first Advent, and today is our Generosity Sunday. We'll have a potluck in Fellowship Hall afterwards. There are pew cards in your, um, pledge cards in your pews if you want to put those in the offering plate. Next Sunday there will be, during worship, during Sunday school rather, an Advent wreath making workshop for grades K through 6 with their parents. It'll be down in the Point of Nina Youth Cafe. And you're invited to bring some greenery to help make that happen. Uh, also, next Sunday in the evening will be our service for hope and healing here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock. Uh, the youth council you'll see in the windows is having a drive for kitty litter. And uh, there are places to bring that. It's in support of a uh, ministry 
to strays in town, and invite you to take part in that. Donovan, you have... I always like following kitty litter. Um, <laughs> a session of uh, our congregation, the leading body of our ruling body of our congregation, is called a congregational meeting for today. I'm going to say that the meeting has been called to order from our opening call to worship, and the benediction will be the prayer uh, for our minutes. Uh, we do have a quorum. And uh, what we're acting upon is simply something from the Book of Order that requires that when a pastor leaves, that we dissolve um, <coughs> uh, our pastoral relationship with Rachel Penmore, which is sad, but it is something that we are called to do. So I will read the motion. The purpose of this meeting is to act upon the request of Reverend Rachel Penmore to make a recommendation to the Presbytery of Middle Tennessee to dissolve her pastoral relationship with Westminster Presbyterian Church and act on other matters arising out of the former. That is the motion from the session. It does not require uh, any second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I just need a vote of acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. you. Testify to us, O God, by the voice of your Spirit. Put your law in our hearts, write your word on our minds, and show your will in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our first reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah. He prophesied to the southern kingdom in its last days before they went into Babylonian captivity, he was a reluctant prophet who suffered greatly for his bold pronouncement of coming judgment. And yet even amidst the judgment, there were words of hope for a remnant. Hear now our reading. The word of the Lord be with you. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away. And you have not attended them, so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, And he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
you want to begin to understand Jesus and where you get caught up in his life, death, and resurrection, a good place to begin, I believe, is Colossians, the first chapter. And I'll read verses 11 through 20, so hear the word of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Well, who understands you? Who understands you? Not the fabricated fabricated lies that other people try to sell about you. Oh, you know, she's as shallow as they come. He's your typical white male. She's in it for yourself. Not that. Who truly sees and understands you? Maybe your family does. Maybe. Maybe. This week, I sat down with the Corcoran family, sat down with them, and they shared their grief with me, the sudden death of Tom. Tom was a Catholic. The service was at the Catholic cathedral. They shared with me their loss, a sudden loss, trying to understand it all, just all messed up and mixed up. And in it all, they tried to share something of the, their love for him. And love doesn't always make sense. Jane said, you know, sometimes I would come into the room and Tom would be watching the television with the sound off. And then she looked at me and she said, what's that about? And I said, I don't know, you married him. (laughs) And she said, I did, I did, I did, I did. All that is to say that the people who love us may not always understand us but they understand us, loving us through all the idiosyncrasies. Oh, that's just Tom. That's just Jane. That's just Bob. That's just Anne. That's just Mary. Is there anything more painful than being misunderstood? Whatever your life has to offer, it's, it gets rejected. Anything more painful than that? It's the first pain of the Bible back in Genesis. You remember the story of Cain and Abel? I think that story happened on Generosity Sunday. I may not be right about that, but I think it was on Generosity Sunday. It was time to make an offering to God, and unlike our generosity campaign where any gift, whatever your gift, as long as your heart is in it, is perfectly accepted, unlike our campaign, two offerings were made to God and only one was accepted. 
You would think that God was big enough to take in both offerings. But God chose Abel's offering over Cain's. Do you understand why? I don't understand why. Cain didn't understand why. It was some big misunderstanding. What a terrible thing. When the gift of your life, that is all that you have to offer, is rejected by the world. As a pastor, I see it all the time. As a pastor, I feel the feelings from parents who weep for their children. I have heard it from the lips of a mother my daughter is just not accepted by, my, by her peers, and I don't understand. She's a beautiful girl. I hear it from the lips of a father. I don't understand why my little girl has to suffer. I'd take her place in a heartbeat, I would. I heard it from the man whose wife left him for someone else, caught by the surprise. I just don't understand why. I heard it from the one who put his life into his career only to reach a certain age and to hear, I'm sorry, your services are no longer needed. What you have to offer, that is you, is not wanted anymore. And he's trying to understand why. I heard it from a woman who's 104 years of age and she told my wife and me, I don't understand why I'm still alive. I don't understand why I'm still alive. I don't understand. There's so much misunderstanding in the air. I've read recently about the cancel culture. Have you read about the cancel culture? Maybe you're living the cancel culture. It's when you boycott someone. When a person says something or does something that goes against your very understanding of how the world should work, you work to cancel out that person. You throw that person out like trash. You eliminate him, you eliminate her, you don't make eye contact, you demonize, and it's happening in our grade schools, in our high schools, in our colleges, in our politics, in our workplaces, and in the church. Our justice these days, it cuts like a knife. Imagine if Jesus had that kind of justice. Imagine if on a Sunday morning, we confess our sins, and then the Spirit moves the leadership to say, I know we've confessed our sins and I'm sorry, but the Spirit has called upon us to realize that some of you, uh, some of you, your sins just, I'm sorry. You're going to have to leave. You and you and you. You, I'm sorry. Your sin, it just... <laughs> You don't belong here. Leave. Your sin is unredeemable. God doesn't understand you. No communion for you. The cancel culture. The ministry of Jesus lasted about three years. That's it. Three years before he got canceled canceled by everyone, canceled by everyone. When you read the gospel story, try to find one person who stepped up and said, hold on here, hold, whoa, 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 whoa. You're crucifying a very good man here. Try to find the protest march around the governor's headquarters that said, stop this execution, please. Not one. Isn't that odd? 
that not one person, I happen to know that in this, in this church there is one person who went to the governor of Tennessee to argue on behalf of a person who is going to be executed. He looked the governor eye to eye and said, you have to know this man. You have to know that Christ has come into his heart and that all that is past is finished and gone. He, he has to live. Not one person stood up for Jesus. A man who wasn't even near a crime except the crime against our very understanding. For Jesus looks us in the eye and says to us, love your enemy. Understand? Jesus looks at us in the eye and says, pray for those who persecute you. Understand? Jesus looks us in the eye and says, don't be afraid of anyone. Understand? Do no one evil for evil. Understand? No weapons. Understand? Touch the untouchable. Understand? Be a friend to those who have been canceled. Understand? No. No. They say he lasted for about three years in ministry. If you count the time from his baptism to the cross, he lasted about three years. But we don't count that. That's not it, is it? For we are Easter people, are we not? We don't cancel this one out. For God has raised him. He is the firstborn from the dead. So that it might, he might come to have the first place in everything. For in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. This is the justice of God, people. This is the justice of God. This is the vision of God that is being lived out now. That all things are being reconciled, whether we like it or not. Whether we do it or not. All things are being reconciled. And this is the table for where it can begin with us. For here is a table where Cain and Abel are invited to sit, where Catholics and Protestants are invited to sit and take part, Jews and Muslims, the dead and the living, the never-trumper with the trumper, the left and the right. We are going to sit down together. You who have been canceled and you who still wield justice with a knife, come, come. You who have been cut and broken, come and there will be peace. Understand? In all that cuts and divides, in all our misunderstandings of one and to another, all our misunderstandings of God, there will be peace made through the blood of the cross. Understand?
we trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed, and blessing the children, healing the sick, and binding up the brokenhearted, eating without caste, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel, unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition. He was crucified, suffering the death of human pain, and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. gratitude to God for all the rich blessings so abundantly poured on our lives. Let us with gratitude respond with our tithes and offerings as the ushers wait on us.
the Lord's. It's made ready for those who love him and those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith, and you have little. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here in a long time. You who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come because it is the Lord who invites you. He is the host. It's his will that those who want him should meet him here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who find him. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, for you fashioned this world in love and ruled over all the earth with grace and peace. Nations and monarchs rise and fall, but your reign is for all time, and your mercy is without end. In love, you made us to love and serve you. When we had turned from you, you bent our knees and bent our knees to gods of our own making. You spoke through prophets to bring us back to your ways. You gave us a vision of your holy kingdom that we might hunger after righteousness and thirst for justice and long for the day when peace will triumph mightily over the pride and greed of nations. Therefore, we praise you, singing with the servants around heaven's throne and with all the faithful of every time and place, to the glory of your mighty name. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Gracious God, give us your Holy Spirit, that these your gifts to us of bread and wine may be a communion in the body and blood of Christ, a foretaste of the banquet in his kingdom. <coughs> By your spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast. Unite us in ministry to be your emissaries throughout the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast with him in eternity. We give you thanks, O God, for him who is King of kings and Lord of lords, the firstborn of the dead, that his is a kingdom of love, peace, and joy. That he is among us as a peaceful servant, rather than a despotic tyrant. Give us a vision of the new Jerusalem, where the lion and lamb shall feed together, and no one shall ever be destroyed upon your holy mountain. Remind us on this day, O God, that your will for heaven is also your will for the earth. That the peace which, we sh which surely awaits us is presently available to us, that the fellowship which we dream of can be among us today. So we do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, until he comes in peace against all our violence, until he comes in generosity amidst all our parsimony, until he comes in food amidst all our hunger, until he comes in community 
midst all of our alienation. On this day when we celebrate his eternal reign, hear us as we pray for your suffering world. Hear our silent prayers for peace. Hear our prayers for our country in the midst of this turbulent time. Hear us, we pray for the sick and those who grieve. Hear us as we lift grateful hearts in this the season of thanksgiving. Blessed art thou, King of Peace, who lives and reigns with the Father and Holy Spirit, and who shall reconcile all things unto yourself. Save us, have mercy upon us, and hear us as we pray through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor, praise and adoration are yours, now and forever. In which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. So often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again in glory. These are the gifts of God for God's people. Draw near with joy and thanksgiving.
Let's pray. Oh, Holy One, grateful we are for the peace made through the blood of the cross, for the love of our dear Savior. Call us now into the ministry of reconciliation, sharing your light and love for the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
first in line in the fellowship hall for our generosity dinner, keep in mind there are people who are following you, okay? <laughs> I'm usually the last one in. I need a little bit of baked beans. That's all I'm asking for, all right? That being said, now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all and all God's people said. Thank you.